6 a.m. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Our Fun. I am Zane Magnish, and for this week's lesson, we'll be looking at the topic, the Sabbath test. Let us pray. Father, we come before you to thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for bringing us so for another week. And as we enter into this day, I ask that you keep us safe and keep our minds ready to in, to intake the lesson that will be taught today. Thank you once again, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. So the Sabbath test. We know that we're living in a time when we can see that a lot of calamities are happening in the world. Let's look back on the specific date of June 6, 2012, when Pope Benedict XVI made a statement to over 15,000 people in St. Peter's Square in Rome. And what he stated was that Sunday will become the day of rest for everyone. It will be a day where people can be free to be with their families and also with God. He even stated that by defending the Sunday, one defends human freedom. Now, he wasn't explicitly stating that the Sunday will be the Sunday law as we have the biblical Sabbath in founding Exodus. But he is indeed saying that Sunday will be looked on as a day of rest. And sooner or later, this law will be passed where if we don't follow this day of rest that is stated by the Pope, we can in turn become persecuted. Now, those who follow the word of God and keep the true Sabbath will be labeled as opposing society's best interests. Now, in this type, time of crisis, we will have persons who will remain faithful to God. And by God's grace and his power, we'll be able to stand firm in our convictions and not yield to the pressures of the world. So instead of receiving the mark of the beast, we will instead receive the seal of God. And seals were used in ancient times to, uh, sorry, to attest the authenticity of official documents. So we would then expect to find God's seals embedded in his law. Now, ancient seals were distinctive individualized marks, as Isaiah the prophet stated in Isaiah 8, verse 16. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among the disciples. Now, if you read further in Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11, which states about, which states the fourth, which is the fourth commandment, which, deal, which deals with the Sabbath we will see that the Sabbath commands all other commandments. So the fourth commandment contains three elements of an authentic seal. The first one, according to Exodus 20, verse 10, which states, there is the name of the seal, which is God, Lord, your God. The second authentic seal is that there is a title for the seal, and that is the Lord who made or as we know, the creator. And then there is a third authentic seal, which states that there is a territory of the seal. So the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, that is the territory of the seal. And according to Revelation 7 verses 1 to 2, the seal of God is placed only on our foreheads, which is a symbol of our lives. He invites us to let him shape our minds by his Holy Spirit so that we can't be moved from the anchor of our faith in the word of God. So thus we understand that the faithful are those who keep the commandments of God and have faith in Jesus. And that's according to Revelation 14 verses 12. And included in these commandments that we should keep is the fourth commandment which talks about the Sabbath. And this is the one commandment the beast's power is thought to change according to Daniel 7 verse 25. So what obstacles remain in life as we continue to see these rapid changes happening in human history? Well, there are many things that can be said. There are wars, there are rumors of wars, and there are changes to God's law. But if we are able to stay faithful to the word of God, stay faithful to God himself, 
we will be able to overcome these pressures and continue to stay right with God. And that, my friends, was a lesson for all. Let us pray to those. Father, this week's lesson has been an intense lesson discussing the mark of the beast and your seal. And there's so much more to discuss and to delve further into. But let us pray for wisdom and guidance as we go through your words so that we may not misinterpret it and that we may stay true to you. Continue to guide us, Lord, on this our Christian journey and continue to keep us on the right path. Thank you, Lord, for all your have done for us. In your name I pray. Amen. That has been another lesson of Alpha. Please join us again tomorrow for another exciting lesson. Be blessed and do have a wonderful day. A lesson for all daily at 6 a.m.